All right, let's call our February 14th Acton School Committee meeting to order, 2012. Um, are there any adjustments to the agenda? No adjustments to the agenda. Then let's move on to uh, our budget work session. Um, we have our, some our selectmen represented here and our Warren Finance Committee. And um, we're going <coughs> to begin with 2 1, which is to review, revise, up and approve. Um, what we had done on 124. And if I could just comment, attached to that resume, there were five blue sheets that were dated 2 2, and then one that was distributed today uh, dated uh, 2 14. So the little small numbers down at the bottom, middle of the page, that you should have in those first five are. One, two, three, four, and seven, and then the the one dated two fourteen is page five. Oh, okay. So those are the ones that you should have. Oh, I don't. I don't have page five. No. It's okay. Two, three, I have four, nine. Okay, some of those are the new ones that uh, we're, we're going to be dealing with tonight. So okay. the ones that uh, from the last meeting. <laughs> we're, uh, one, two, three, four, seven, and five. But cleaned up. Yes. Okay. And those sheets reflect whatever you did at that last meeting. Okay. okay. That was in the packet. Yes. Right. That's that. Yeah. Except for that okay. page five, which is we did today, and it should be in that packet of stuff that she gave you. Okay. Right so yeah. Just move page five over. Yeah. That was like the update from the twenty-fourth. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And I guess what I would suggest you do is look and make sure that you think that resume is what we did. And I think just for the record, we ought to approve it if it reflects what you think we did. Okay, so let's take a look <clears throat> then. We're looking at the packet that was in our, at what was in our packet for us, correct? Yes. Yep. And the first page is um, guidance. And are, are these okay. figures that were decided upon for the guidance department at our at our last meeting? Number page five would be in today's packet. Page one. one. Page one we're looking at right now. Page oh, page one. one. Oh, last, right. Okay, yeah. right from last. Well, well yeah, yeah, we're looking at the at the packet first of all for you know, for that. Good. And that's a total down at the bottom of sixty six six sixty two. Yeah. And that reflects a $750 uh, decrease that you made in that last line uh, counseling program. Okay, 66, 62. That's a decrease? <coughs> From the original work uh, sheet that we were working on. That was originally 1500 mm -hmm. and now yeah. it's 750 That's why it's mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. So the amount requested under the counseling program was originally fifteen hundred, and that was reduced to that meeting to seven fifty. <coughs> right. Okay. Any other questions on that page? What's that include? Because I know the supplies and everything are all in here, and, and salary. The counseling program. So what's the seven fifty for? Uh, what was that? Uh, for mentor. Um, they have to have somebody that they can. Couldn't allow because Pussy's lost his mm -hmm. name. That they would have to do now. The counselor has to have someone that they can go to, to talk to, and this is part of a program where they can't talk to anybody within the building. They have to talk to another counselor. Is that it's right? A Trish? It's a clinical supervision. Right. Thank you. So the other counselor gets paid. Yes. To, for the mentors. Yes. It's re their certification it's requires it. Yeah. Right. Right. Thank you. Thank you. And 750 will cover that, Carlene? Yes, it doesn't have to be like every week. Yes. Okay. So just okay. periodically through the As year. needed, essentially. As right. Needed. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions on that page one under the guidance program? All right. Let's look at page two, which is the uh, 
nurse <coughs> school nurse services and you didn't make any changes in that area last week or last time we met anybody have any questions or suggestions or our uh, on the nurses section from either Warrant and Finance or the board, either one? No? Okay. Let's go to page three, which is co curricula. And the changes that you made there uh, to the first line, uh, you increased that by $3,571.94. So that the new total is 12 280.79, and that's also reflected in the bottom line of the bottom number of the 17,255.32. That's also that same uh, 3571.94 increase, and that was from uh, you essentially you transferred that from uh, improvement, improvement of instruction. Of so it's really not an so overall, it's not, it's not going to be it's not an it's increase, just a, it's, it's a, a change. Movement. Yeah. It's a right. Okay. That line has been decreased by that much. Yeah. We're from improvement of instruction. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Anybody have any questions about this page? No? Page four. Extracurricula. <coughs> I don't think there were any changes that we made at that uh, no. on that page at that meeting. Okay, page five. This would be library services. Okay, this is uh, <coughs> slightly different because now the total amount, the 77, 7, reflects mm -hmm. changing the librarian from three days a week to five days a week and reducing the ed tech from what? Two days a week to zero. No, three to zero. Three to zero. Yeah, it's two to three. And three. Yeah. Well, she must have accepted the... No, we need to discuss that or you... Oh. We need to discuss where you... Did she want to work five days? She didn't want to last year, I don't think. She, she cannot was. work five days, but she <laughs> highly recommends that Acton have a full-time librarian. She understands that puts herself in a predicament, but in thinking of just the students, she loves her job, she loves being here. So she herself, you know, wouldn't want to lose what she has, but could not say that she could take a five-day-a-week job at this time. But she does highly recommend that Acton have a full-time librarian. So it puts really the ball in the school board's court right now as to deciding what you want. To go back the way it was or to look for a full-time? Well, you really have, uh, what we've discussed is three different options. Right. The way it and is Callie right now. did some numbers on right. all three options. So. It, it, so it, so right now it's three days ed tech and two days librarian. And that cost, Carlene, would be <coughs> for 37969 So let's just... 37969 Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The flip of that would be three days the teacher, the librarian, and two days the ed tech. That would be 65,211 approximately. So she could work three days? Yes. <clears throat> what the school board had talked about last week, at that point, you now, Five. right now it is two to three, two librarian, and three, three attack. Yeah. Right. right. And, and that's the 37,969. Right. And if we go to three days, <clears throat> teacher. And two days ed tech, it jumps to 65000 Right, because now you're allowing for health benefits, which are not yeah. available in the first combination. Okay. And then the final one, full-time teacher, no ed tech, you're looking at 77781 
on this sheet. Right. Yeah. So the real challenge becomes about, talk, as we've talked and I've mentioned um, in, in prior reports, is the vision piece. What do you really want for the students of Acton? This is one of those classic examples of you can't make a decision based on the person. Because if you really believe, as Sue and I have talked about, a full-time librarian, <coughs> you cannot have the image of Susan Onion in your mind <coughs> to fulfill that obligation. We may get lucky and do a job share or whatever, but the person is not the guarantee. With the three day two, with the, with the swap of the three to two, you do have Susan staying on. You My know, thing or you is, can leave it as is. I feel I have to get through the whole budget and go through everything before I start even recommending. You know what I mean? I need to see how the whole budget comes together. But it's good to know we have options. And whichever way you go, we've got the figures so we can plug them in pretty simply when you're ready. Well, my, my concern is the discussion we had last month that, um, to gain an extra day out of a full-time libra librarian, we're talking almost $30,000 more for one day. Because of the because option of, the health, of health, health, benefits. health benefits. And if we go to a full five day, is that it's, it's twice the amount, but now we're at five days as opposed to just the <coughs> That, that, that was my point when we right. discussed it the last time and, right. and again last year. Right. I think I agree with Mary. We need to look at the, the rest of the budget, see how it, it falls. Because it's a big that chunk. Kind of decision. And that's probably going to be true of several of the tough decisions you have to make yeah. as we go along. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's leave page four then page five I mean excuse me and let's go to I have page seven next seven. Yeah. okay page seven which is improvement of instruction and this is where you took some of that the first line of 2771.40 was decreased by 3572.60 and that went to that uh, co-curricular and the second one up uh, line uh, 3310 is a new amount of seventy five hundred dollars which is for two hundred and fifty dollars per uh, three ed techs for what, what was the reason for that I forget what you said that oh the shift yeah those were for stipend positions stipends yeah what, um, what positions are those that would receive a stipend for the ed tax? <coughs> uh, no, it's it's not the um, improvement of instruction line, the um, the cash program, which is the after school then, homework, okay. was mm -hmm. accidentally put into this line instead of into the co-curricular as well as the college trip, which was another stipend we pay. Where they take yeah. some of the kids to yeah. school, but those should have been put into the co-curricular. They were put into this line by. So that was just what they were just shifted to where they should have belonged. So, so uh, 750? Staff development, that said text, they're entitled according to their contract to have workshops. Yeah. That Okay. That's the money okay. for workshops. The $750. Okay. Yes. Okay. That makes me feel better. Okay. So the other stuff <coughs> is going into a different Okay. Any questions on page 7? So that's essentially what you did last time. So now we'll go on to the revised uh, timeline. And this is what we got from. <coughs> We also got an e I got an email from the <coughs> <Andrew. coughs> Andrew made some um, inquiries with Mr. Neto, the attorney, and um, she came up with a proposed timeline as well <coughs> to after the one we have. And I think you've got a copy of that somewhere. Yeah, right here. Yeah. That's this paper here. Yeah. 
what we did is we took your last date that you had down and then figured out what we had to do after that. So now in order to meet the requirements of absentee balance and all that. So now we have a final date for your uh, town meeting and a final date for the election. Mm -hmm. okay. So we need to vote on that timeline, or no? That's just for your information. That you made that adjustment at the last meeting, and therefore we just gave you a revised one, so it would reflect what you're actually okay. doing. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and one of these things that um, Jen had asked me about was she wants to know if we would like them to the um, attorney to look at the warrant articles mm -hmm. this year mm -hmm. because we've had issues in the past with the way it's written, as the way it was taken. The auditing firm as well had asked for the same thing. So do we want them to send them to Mr. Neto before we post them? I mean, the wording and all the that. Wording. I mean, we've been through this a million times. There's but one article that, that causes confusion. And which which one is that? Do you remember? I mean, the one that they have to vote for, that one? Right. The referendum one? The referendum one. Right. Yeah. So I thought we had but that we legally that done. This year? I thought it had been the one, the one yes, we have we an have issue with is um, some I of the funding, I and I believe know. that the school lunch program was in it. And what happens is it's in one line and then it's in another, and it's because of consolidation law that it's, the way you wrote it up changed it. But when it comes to us committing taxes, where the, the town votes you in a certain amount, but the way it's written, we're voting you in the amount that the town <coughs> we're, we're committing to what the town gave you, but you're also getting that same money approved again. So when they do our audit, it just messes it up. So that's why they want to make sure that that's fixed this year, because that's been two years in a row that's happened to us okay. during our audit. No, if it has that's to. That's fine. Yeah. If they, it shouldn't you know. cost you much to have that no. done. No. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The auditors yeah, said they could do it. That's why they asked to look at it. Your, your auditors asked to look at it, and ours did too. So if we have, I mean, the same company, but both the, the town and the school auditor want to look at it. Makes I mean, sense. It, that should be enough. Makes sense. Yeah. Oh, so, are we having the, the auditors look at it, or are we having the Drummond and Woodson look at it to make sure that it's correct? Well, we can do both. Okay. Do both. Yeah, smart idea. Because I know some of these uh, some of these articles are clearly printed out in in the state law books as to exactly how they're supposed to be written, right. and. Um, but if we have some, if we've had some kinks in that, then, yeah, yeah then let's. But let I think if you get Drummond Woodson's approval, then you know you've got the latest <laughs> version version right. of yeah. it. Yeah. And we need to have it right. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're the authorities on it. And then if the auditors come back at us, we could say it's been approved yeah. by an attorney. Yeah. We've written it right because right. that's they keep coming back every right. year on this one. Right. Yeah. Okay. Anything else on the timeline? Next budget workshop meeting is two weeks from today. <coughs> now, did the early part of the timeline change? I, I, I haven't seen the new new one, but I assume it's just adding on to the end. Adding right? on based to the on, end. Yeah. Yes, correct. Based on what I just heard. Right. Well, actually, we, did make we moved couple. one from last session from the 24th to tonight. The school administration one was was scheduled to be done right, and we talked about that last week. Yeah, I think. and you got one of those in your package, or, or well. a month ago, or what have you. Mm -hmm. The last um, time we met. Where where is it in the scheme of things? I haven't encountered it so far. Either that or I. Probably on the back of one of the other pages. Should be right on the second page of that resume that you got. Ah, okay, there this one go. here. Got it. Thank you. Before you get. Too far along, uh, you might be interested to know that right. uh, we did get a printout from the state uh, as of the second, and frankly, it looks pretty good. But I got to caution you. Uh, every it's written I don't know how many times in this whole business. This is preliminary, subject to change, whatever. And the thing that worries me the most is that. They've got the, and you've got a copy of it, this one here. If you look at that top line, which is Acton, and you look at column six, that's pretty routine. You take that one plus column, excuse me, column five plus column six equals column seven. That column six is the one that worries me mm. because uh, 
There are only 14 communities in the whole state that are getting anything there. There's nobody else in York County that's getting anything there. And I'm just worried to death when the politicians start looking at this and they say, oh, only 14 places in the whole state. One Look of at them the is next acting. one. We're 173,000, and these ones are 11,000, 44,000. Yeah, right. Something's, something's not, right. not right. Do you, well, the economic disadvantage adjustment is um, LD 1274. Yeah. And it says that um, statutory changes that resulted in 10% lower student to staff ratios um, for school admin units under 1,200 students, which, had we consolidated, we wouldn't have been considered for this because we are under 1,200 students. Um, benefits are no longer included for other, other things. Um, the it says the implementation of the minimum economically disadvantaged student adjustment in order to qualify the minimum adjustment to school administrative units, they must operate a school that qualifies for minimum special ed or minimum subsidy adjustment and must have resident elementary free and reduced lunch percentages that are greater than the state average of 46.9%. And we are. And we so are. We so, so we are that, Phil. For that, they're giving us that extra $173,000. Well, I, I suggest I you don't spend it, it yet. I believe it. is believing. Don't tell anybody. Wait, wait, wait till the check's in the mail and received. No, no, wait till the cash is Wait till we cash it. I don't even believe that. I, um... I made a lot of phone calls when I saw this. I said, this is wrong. I'm sure the decimal's in the wrong place. So Though I did read something about this, about you, something about small schools, though, mm -hmm. something. I did read something. But we are. But I think if you disregard that $173,000, <laughs> you're still, it looks like, going to get about $74,000 more than last year, than last yeah. year mm -hmm. which is positive. I again wouldn't spend it yet, but uh, no. No, we need to save that. We need to save some of that oh, money yeah. for same projects and that are. Well, I mean, more. I wouldn't bank on it yet because no. No. that changes all the time. I don't have too much okay. faith about uh, how things are going to shake out in Augusta. Mm -hmm. Wait a yeah. <clears throat> And you do notice the section about the evaluations. You know, yeah. Yours yeah. went down 7%. Yeah. And uh, mm. you know, that's pretty much what you expected, 7% on your evaluations? Yeah, I, I just heard today um, somebody was telling me that a lot of the ocean uh, front communities have gone down quite a bit too, so there's a way down too. So. Well, that's probably got something to do with Falmouth and Cape Elizabeth and yeah, some of those. There, there's, there's a way down, too, yeah. so, yeah. Some of those. Um, yeah. And you can bet they're going to be in there politicking and lobbying and whatever to get this yeah. to their advantage. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They have some, you know, the people aren't buying second homes on the lakes and, and they're not buying second homes on the ocean, so the valuations have gone so much, and we've got so much lake for our property, that's why it hit us so hard. <coughs> so I just thought I would throw that out before you go too, too much further on it. Okay. So I think now you're ready to take a look at the <coughs> ones that we only broke out for tonight. And you have a handful of those that we gave to you. And if you're looking at the page numbers there. Page number eight. We just did page seven, so this must be right, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Starting with page eight is... School administration. Okay. Uh, this is Trisha's primary uh, responsibility. Uh, we've got most things in there except principal salary and benefits. Mm -hmm. uh, you can make it nothing and make it retroactive, and then you know what that is. Or you can treat her fairly and stick a number in there at some point in the future. <laughs> yeah, I think that's something that the board needs to talk discuss. about and discuss. Well, you do have an item in your executive session to look at a process for that and a, yeah. some uh, <coughs> paperwork that I've given to you uh, that might serve as a good jumping off point for doing that. So. Okay. I guess. <coughs> 
I just, well, did you want to do an overview of this? Well, you're going to find most everything is very close to where it was last year. Um, was there something going on with the employee training and development that there's a new thing or something? Well, Linda is anticipating retiring. Uh -huh. So. <laughs> no? Let her go. It's <laughs> <laughs> all your fault. I know. <laughs> I remember the so, day. I do too. Although Linda has not gotten a final word from the state as to what day. Um, in anticipation of possibly having to hire a new office manager and train, um, we put in some monies to have that overlapping so that somebody could actually job shadow and be trained while Linda was still here. Okay. Um, three three zero zero. Um, I'm calling, was it 60 hours? How much did we? I think we ended up doing 30. 30 hours. If someone started at the base rate of Linda's okay. position. Um, and then the other, the, this, this 6,000 um, dropped because of um, redistribution, trying to accurately assess where um, supplies are coming from. Excuse me, Trish. Was that 30 hours that the new job, the new person, if Linda does retire, or 30 hours of job shadowing? Job shadowing, job of training. Okay. So That's at the you? end of this coming year, is that correct? But Lynn, uh, next year. Next year. At the next end of the year. Right, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. That's the guess at this point. At this point, I still have a call to make. Um, the end of. She's got more than one. An I know it's going to shock you, but she got more than one answer from the State Department. No. <laughs> 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 that is shocking. <laughs> as to when she qualifies or not. So mm -hmm. depending on whose answer is really the right one, we will then move I'm forward. hoping they're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> they told me the first time. <laughs> well, does she work, Linda work uh, a number of days per year? Every day. I've You're here every day. Three years. Year 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 right. employee. Right. Okay. Eighty yeah. what? When did you start? 25 years. And, and how many hours a week? 40? 40. 40. She gets paid for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. She's really here 80, but <laughs> sometimes of the year. Okay, any, so, any other changes under there? Trish? Not, you know, not really. Um, again, Carlene and, and I tried to go through and see where the costs were actually being occurred, uh, you know, incurred. Um, tuition reimbursement, you know, has, um, you know, me in for one course, one graduate level course, um, you know, really tried to assess, like I said, even the t technical costs, whether mm -hmm. they really needed to be redistributed to um, the IT um, account. Uh, what things were no longer being contracted? Uh, what did we own? So, the telephone, we didn't need the maintenance agreement. Anymore. Right, maintenance agreement is gone, but we still need the alert now. So, for contracted service. Contracted service is the alert now. Mm -hmm. And the RISO maintenance. RISO. Travel is in there for professional development. Yes, I. Um, that and the other days. It is. I, I do travel, <coughs> and I have not been <coughs> charging. I have not yeah. been charging the school. Yeah. Just say like you're talking about travel to pick up children. Or <laughs> no, I don't no? charge the school for that. I um, no, this is actually for professional development, well, going to workshops. Know, and yes, it'll be four dollars a gallon. I'm <laughs> wow. lucky so, I know. Uh, like the, the main principals association puts on <laughs> workshops several times a year, um, and. They can sometimes be quite a distance away, Augusta, Rockport. So, I didn't say it was an ugly place to go. I just said it was far. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we'll discuss later. Basically, then. Um,
it's only up about 3,000 from last year. The whole line is, no if, if you took away Trisha's, that, that minus is mm -hmm. Trisha's mm -hmm. salary, correct? Mm -hmm. So if you take that 75,000 and you subtract it's Trisha's salary from that, mm -hmm. basically this whole thing is up like 3,000. I have it down. Three thousand five hundred sixty-eight dollars. Mm -hmm. I had a calculator. As as is now with before her salary is yeah. determined. And her benefit line too. Right. Mm -hmm. Any other questions about this particular? Okay then, if not, then let's move on to the next page. <coughs> Which is, for me, is page 19. Is that what you have? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Operations and maintenance. Again, there's no salary amount in this one for benefits. So we need to stick those in. If Andy can, uh, Andy, can you give us a yep. overview? Uh, I gave you guys a packet um, for you to look at. Basically, it's all information that you've seen in the past. Um, there are a few areas with small increases and those increases are for um, security which is an increase of five hundred dollars and that is for the monitoring of the new system which we installed in the maintenance building this year <clears throat> the other increase is <coughs> in the supply line i've added um, an additional nine hundred dollars and that is to put a maintenance coat on the gym floor halfway through the school year. Um, that's something that I would like to do um, as kind of a preventative maintenance measure. Uh, how, much, how much did you say? $900. <laughs> the next increase is in the equipment line, which is increased by $500. Um, I have plans for next year to um, replace one of our high-speed buffers and also a new wet bag. And then the last increase that you will see is in the heating line, which is our best estimated guess, um, which is increasing our guess by 50 cents per gallon, which results in a $10,000 increase in that line. When do they usually sign the contract or get a price for the contract on that? It's never the same <coughs> from year to year. It used to be... Didn't he just sign it like in September? Yeah, I mean, before so. before the market got so volatile, usually we would sign it. I think the first or second year I was here, we'd have it signed like in January. Mm -hmm. And then it kept getting pushed and pushed and pushed. And, you know, this year it was very late. It was yeah. the latest ever. You know, but you do that on purpose. I know. And what the market's to, doing, and when, yeah, you, when it's most advantageous, that's when you jump. Yeah. And that's I'm something not sure that is going to be advantageous this year. But <laughs> that's something, as you know, we do with Sanford. We buy in with Sanford. But can you tell if we saved money this year with the warmer weather? It seems <laughs> to have been warmer. Except for the eight degrees ask. or whatever. Yeah. I, I mean, I would definitely say that our consumption is going to be down based upon, you know, a couple of things. That is, you know, we haven't changed the the um, building temperature since a couple of years back when we decided to drop the, the building temperature a couple of degrees mm -hmm. and we haven't had the cold weather this year and the other good thing is is so far the repairs have been down this year on the system as well we're not out of the woods yet but you know you know at times I feel like we're a you know, like a stimulus package for Johnson and Jordan with the repairs, but this year we just haven't, you know, we've done really well. 
Is it the original system from 20 years ago? Yes. <laughs> That's why we, he shouldn't have said. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> No, but I mean, you know, we've discussed it many times. I mean, it's an aging system, but we also spend a fair amount of money doing preventative maintenance each year. Um, it's, it's one of those things, you know. It's You can do relatively well, or you can have a couple of repairs. Like earlier this year when I mentioned to you folks that we had to replace the, the lines from the tank into the building, were that was like a, about a $5,000 repair that was unanticipated but it had to be done, so. And preventive maintenance done this year will probably f be 15 to 20 percent less than next year. The pre preventative maintenance contract through Johnson & Jordan, they've actually held the same number now for, I believe it's three years they haven't increased the cost of that contract. Well, and stand by. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, you know, they want the contract too. So they know that other people are hungry for the opportunity. Um, so I think that, you know, that you'll see the trend that they will hold that number relatively close in the next year. You know, the other <coughs> vendors are the same way, our rubbish removal and our um, sewer um, disposal those folks even with the increase in cost of fuel they want the business they've held the held the numbers <coughs> pretty tight from year to year so we're fortunate in that respect you know things are not going to get any cheaper but you know the way things are with the economy these people still they want to retain the contracts that they have so they're willing to work with us uh, I know that you talked about an energy audit yes and that's a good idea. Well, I'm also looking at, you know, as things, as costs increase, you know, for the building maintenance, I need to be conscious of the fact that there are ways that we can offset that by trying to work a little bit smarter. Um, the energy audit that was done on the building was done in 2003 and the energy audit that we got at that time had some great information in it, but that was 2003. We're going into 2013. Ten years has gone by since we've done a, uh, an energy audit. And even if there aren't any great, you know, leaps in technology that, you know, we can get, if we can get a small, couple small pieces, it will help. So you need to do an energy audit <coughs> on your heating system. I replaced a 10-year-old oil-fired burner with a new gas-fired burner. Number one, I locked my propane in at 264 a gallon, which is far below what you can lock oil in. There. Number two, I now have a unit that's 96% efficient. You know, when you can vent the unit out through a piece of two-inch PVC pipe, you know they're extracting every BTU <coughs> out of it before it goes out. And, like, you know, <coughs> this... This oil situation is not going to go away. No. Well, one of the things that um, Johnson and Jordan provided us too with this year is they came in um, like halfway through the winter and they did like a semi-annual check, which they have not done in the past. And as part of that check, they checked the efficiency of the boilers. So, and you know, and I, I have discussions with them when they're here because it is like, like I said, it's an aging system. But what we're getting for efficiency out of the actual boilers themselves, considering the age, is actually pretty decent. So, you know, and the other ways that, you know, I'm looking at, you know, you know, preventative maintenance wherever we can, um, wherever we can, you know, keeping up on floor care, for example. You know, we've worked hard on a better floor care program 
which gives us the best bang for our buck as far as when we spend money for floor finish, we're going to get the full life expectancy out of it before we have to strip and refinish again. Um, I'm looking at less contracted services whenever possible. Um, and I mentioned the um, energy audit. Also, um, built the building weatherization that we've done in the past year, the caulking of the windows and doors, that's going to help us. Um, and the other thing is that um, I've been working on in the last couple of years, too, is just overall in increasing the communication with the custodial staff to make sure that we're all on the same page working as a team so that we're getting our best bang for our buck on the labor end of things too when we come to you know the salary and benefit line that we're getting you know what we're paying for well what did i read did you did i read it from you we were going to move to a different electricity provider or something yes we did that in the last in the last um, month but would that reduce that line because that's it up oh it's only up Point too far, did, did you actually it's switch to electricity? It's supposed to go down. Yes. You, yeah. I, I know on a personal level. I've I did. Seen a major drop. <laughs> Everybody's yeah. doing it. Have you noticed the difference yet? Have you gotten your first billing? No. 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 Mine's not going to start till March. I did. It's not going to start till March. When for me. Going? For me. I don't know about anybody else. When Some still dick. Sorry. Already, I've, I've already, it's already done noticed. It. <coughs> you will probably see it on our next bill. Mm -hmm. Is that right? A month, so. Yeah. But I mean, if you know, it was a real simple process, um, and you know, it don't. It, it took like maybe what ten or fifteen minutes, Colleen. If Colleen helped slow. me with it, and <laughs> <laughs> that's why it probably would take most people five minutes. But um, it was simple. No, but should that line be reduced? Um, we can wait till see what happens. I mean, we can wait that. and see, but. Well, don't they say a 17% savings? Well, Keep in mind, depends. though, that's only on a portion of the bill. Right. right. It's not on the right. Right. bill. It's not on the delivery. It'd be it's great if it was 17%. I thought it yeah. was on the across the top. No, no, no. It's it's all the lines yeah. are the same sure cost and everything. It's, it's a portion of the bill. Supply versus delivery. Yeah. CMP Probably. still delivers the service. Did Michelle tell you how much we were saving at the town hall? Because we, we've been... Yeah. No, I didn't get the exact amount. No. She said something like $400 a month, so I'm not sure that's, for that's for the town that we spend a lot more than you wow. When did you make your switch? Well, Michelle um, is also the um, te uh, the uh, treasurer in um, Chaplin, and they did it first, and then she told us about it, and then we did it. So I think it's been like two months, maybe three months. And I think they've speeded up uh, small businesses and whatever over the regular households, so haven't they, in their processing it? Someone said, I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what they did. It, it seemed to work uh, fairly quickly for myself, and I, I can tell you um, we've been on it for uh, about three months. I've seen an average drop of about $25 per month in my overall in my electric bill. But in that time period, I've also <laughs> added a second pellet stove in my garage, which runs all weekend, and using more lights in the garage. So, and my bill still went down approximately $25. Wow. Did they guarantee the rate for a length of time? Or? No. No, it depends on their market yeah. pretty much. What they can buy. Right now they're a cent per kilowatt less than, less than Central Next Maine. Tech. Well, not Central Maine. doesn't do power. Uh, it's this company. What right. is it? The, Next the Tech? Florida Next Light Extra Power. Uh, yeah, Florida, Florida Light Power. Power. Yeah. Yeah. But it's about a cent less a kilowatt. It makes a big difference in some, you know. So they don't guarantee the rate for any length of time. No, but then now they now we have competition where we didn't have any competition exactly. yeah. before. Yeah. I they did guarantee it. For I thought it was for years. I think it, I, I'd have it to. Might be my the, wife actually did all the change. Maybe over, for but businesses I think there is it might be. A guarantee of some sort yeah. in there. I think what you're going to find Do is you know? the, the the biggest issue. It is a guarantee. Is they purchased most of their power from Hydro Quebec, and I and uh, don't quote me on it. I believe that. Another source that they're generating, as opposed to the old uh, floor light power out in uh, Yarmouth, that they generate a lot with L uh, LNG, which the price, uh, excuse me, natural gas, which the price of that is way down. 
Mm. And Mary, when um, Andy put this budget together, it was before we even right. That's why I'm yeah. saying now so we yeah. could look at that line. Maybe I'm just saying. Yeah. I think we need to give it a couple months to, yeah. to yeah. see what happens. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. some kind of change in it. Um, the other thing that I want to mention to you folks tonight too, and it's in my monthly report, is the fact that I didn't put in for any any capital improvement um, funds this year, and even though we've had numerous discussions about, you know what's up and coming for the long-term you know needs of the school as far as the repairs and whatnot goes i'm taking a look at you know in the past four years we've installed the generator we've replaced the gym roof we've installed new intercom and phone system we've done the caulking of the exterior doors and windows currently we're working on the upgrade of the exterior lighting and we also have in the works the replacement of the kitchen floor. So even under tough economic times, we have still managed, with the support of the school committee and the community, we have still managed to take on um, and accomplish these six projects. Um, knowing that, um, we're facing other areas in the school that directly impacts kids, such as the kindergarten enrollment, um, we just talked about the, the library position. There's going to be a lot of things for consideration this year. Um, I didn't put in for any capital improvement funds. Um, I would, however, um, like to see a reserve account established yeah. Yeah. so that we are putting some funds aside yes. so that we're kind of putting, you know, our ducks in a row instead of having to go after some of this stuff reactively financially go after it proactively um, and have an account established so that as these needs arise we can meet and um, discuss a course of action to get you know the, the future projects done well, i haven't heard anything about the phone system or people love it or hate it or it's working it's not working <clears throat> it's all good working as far as I, think I know. don't hear anything that's usually a good sign I know. except <laughs> if you're on the phone at the time well this is something we had talked about previously anyway was establishing a capital mm -hmm. improvement reserve fund and I I think that's something we need to seriously well, the building is getting older and boilers don't do anything. I'm not saying nothing. <laughs> seen that long ago. <laughs> well, that, that's one of the discussions we had last time. Fortunately, we've, we've done well. Uh, the, the public has stepped up to help us in, in getting the things done, especially when we do have a ma major issue that goes wrong. But um, I don't see why we shouldn't have some kind of capital improvement fund designated for the school. So if something does happen, the money's there to, to take care of it. Well, it would make it a little more possible to get yeah. maybe larger capital improvement projects done down the road that exactly. maybe some of it could be funded on an as-needed basis but you'd have this yeah. reserve to draw on <laughs> certainly makes good sense it's not like you're gonna be spending more if you have it necessarily it's right. just it helps to budget it it's yeah. kind of knowing that you Cushions should be the setting shock. some money aside each year knowing that yeah. you're gonna have things above and beyond the operational budget that's gonna come our way unfortunately so My suggestion is you still you do it the same way the fire department is doing. We're going to have to do it for the town, um, and like you did the roof, the generator, and the intercom system. You ask the town separately from your budget because if your budget gets cut, that's the first thing you got to cut. If you have a separate warrant article that allows you to put money in a, in a fund like the fire truck or like the roof and things like that, then that doesn't affect the vote on your budget and it's done at the regular town meeting as opposed to uh, uh, during the school budget meeting. So my suggestion is you do it separately as a warrant article on the selectmen's warrant. Yep. Now, Ted, there's something last year there, you asked for 50000 for the fire, fire, fire truck. Is that something that was set up for, uh, you, you have to ask for it each year? Yes. Yeah. And, and they, my understanding is they set it aside in a separate account. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It can't and be spent for up to the town meeting yeah. to decide how much they want to add. Mm -hmm. But if you don't do something like that, <coughs> you know, you take a fire truck, at the end of 20 years, the insurance company says, 
it's gone. <coughs> yeah. And if you don't start a fund, uh, $250,000 or $275,000 is a big whack all at once. Yeah. And it's the same thing. The school buildings are town buildings as well as school buildings especially now that you have the generator, because now it's a, you can use it for an emergency shelter. You should have a, a separate fund that's voted on separately from the school budget for continuing addition or repairs or whatever. And then after it's established, it will only take a vote of the school board in order to spend that money. So if it comes in and says there's a leak in the old part of the school, we've got to replace the roof, and then the school board just votes on it and the money's there, as long as it's put in as building maintenance. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. I mean, the, the long-term stuff that you can obviously plan on and predict, it's easy, but, you know, like, for example, the first year that I came here, it was actually the summer before I came here, and Richard's brought it up before, the school had to have a new well installed. Mm -hmm. And I believe that that money came out of that year's operational budget. Yeah. Yeah. Or it had to be absorbed yeah. somewhere in mm -hmm. the school's operational yeah, budget. It, it was, and that, mm -hmm. was, that was a overnight deal. I mean, yeah. it went over the weekend. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, we, uh, Buddy set it up, and they came in and put the new well, the system. But it, they didn't lose any school time. Yeah. So I think that, you know, those, it's, it's not the anticipated ones that we can plan right. on that scare me. It's the unanticipated ones where you would have to absorb it in, an, in your current budget. That would be difficult to do. In one year, the sewer system froze yeah, because we had that. cold but no snow. This mm -hmm. year we have no snow but no cold. So maybe we're going to luck out there, right? Hopefully. Is toilet still flushing and all? Everything's going <laughs> where it is. <laughs> Everything's going where it's supposed to go. That's good. That's a good thing. Okay, does anybody have any other questions or, uh, for Andy under the maintenance budget? Or did you have anything else you wanted to add? a general add question Andy? for this in the last page we, we were on. Um, is there a, a guesstimate as to when these other numbers are going to get filled in? I mean, obviously it's a separate parallel process, but. Probably by any, the next budget meeting, right? Any thoughts? We could probably put numbers yeah. in. I would, I would say by so. the next budget well, meeting. We've got a session later tonight where I hope we start the ball rolling specifically toward that end. And, you know, <coughs> we want it sooner rather than later, that's for sure. But because that's, that's but holding up everything, making, you, making your decisions. <coughs> wind down to the, near the end of this yeah. individual process, it's going yeah. to be there. We're going to backfill it. Okay. And hopefully we'll start that process or get it organized tonight. Thank you. Okay, then let's move on to the next page, which is nutrition. Pretty straightforward, really. Uh, the biggest item, or the different one here, is line um, 7300 equipment, <coughs> where she did request um, a cart here because. Uh, it's a need. There's a need, and uh, other than that, things are really pretty, pretty straightforward. And I just <coughs> observed from you know kind of an outsider's point of view. I think this is a good deal where you contract with uh, Sanford for some of these services. I think mm -hmm. it's beneficial. It's it's a good approach for a community like this. It's actually quite a savings to us. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think the first year we did this, we saved about $40,000. Yeah. <laughs> Any questions on nutrition? No, I hope she's right about the food only going up $1,500. No, no, food. food. I don't know. I feel like my bigger. grocery bill. Mm. I don't know. Every time I go, I'm like, I didn't buy anything. <laughs> they're going to be cutting out the potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> the potatoes. Holly went through. 
Holly went through and looked at what she had been budgeting and what she had been actually spending, and she well, as long as reworked she her numbers and she that. figured even with the increase for the you know mm -hmm. transportation charges that that would be sufficient. Okay. Having worked with her for years, I know that she's relatively conservative, but mm -hmm. boy, she's always been pretty pretty right on with her numbers. And I think she gives you a very good product. I don't know. Yeah, you eat it. What's that? You eat the food? Do I? I don't eat a lot of school lunch, no. But I'm not a kid. You know? Supposed to be nutritious. <coughs> Anything else under the nutrition line? The nutrition section? You want to check? You don't want to check the color of the cheese or anything? <laughs> <laughs> Did I get white or yellow? Not <laughs> green. <laughs> well, they were going to. Okay, and that brings us to our last one under here, which is transportation. And tra our transportation is all done by contract, and the contract is already signed, correct? It expires next year, the end of this it, budget year. The yeah. end of this yeah. budget year. So <clears throat> that's pretty much written in stone, that one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Doesn't require much chit chat. No chit chat. No chit chat. Nope. And I think you're lucky that you got a, a contract that doesn't have a uh, surcharge. Well, an escalation fee for, mm -hmm. for fuel. Uh, they didn't do that again. No, do that again. Nope. Either they forgot and we quick signed it. <laughs> no, I didn't. Unfortunate. You'll notice that you've been one that I missed, sir. No, no there's didn't. no capital there's no improvement capital. one because there are no requests. So we didn't give you a blank sheet of paper. <laughs> Andy, what I was the equipment? Appreciate the savings incurred. What, what, what did you have down? I can't find a backup was, on your equipment. It was account. a $500 increase. It's on page. It says, uh, purchase of a new floor buffer and new wet bag. Yeah. What else yeah. falls in there? Under the equipment? Yeah. That's, what probably, that's probably going to take most of the $4,000. The buffer and the wet, wet bag? Yes. The wet bag isn't actually like a shop bag. It's, it's a piece of equipment that we use for stripping floors. Okay. So it's not just a little... It's not just a typical... <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately. It's not a Swiffer. <laughs> right. <coughs> okay. Well, I think you're wise to do the, uh, you know, put the additional coat on the gym floor that mm. saves another year of being stripped and... Well, it would be... You know, we we sand it and refinish it during the summer months, and like right now, you know, the end of February, early March, as basketball season wears down, there's you know this is a heavy usage uh, right time, yeah. and doing another coat, you know, like late February <coughs> or maybe mid March, I mean it would keep the floor looking good for you know like the spring events, graduation stuff like that, hmm. so. And now that we're doing it ourselves rather than contracting it out, it kind of balances out. We actually would be getting, you know, additional service for relatively the same amount of money. So good. That's definitely a trend I've noticed over the years. That uh, systems are going to that approach, and it, it really, in the long run, saves you a lot of money. <laughs> <coughs> and where it really saves you money is when you have to get down and sand it down and. We do all your lines and yeah. that stuff. Uh, I mean, if we you put that off, you're saving a lot of money. Yeah, if we have to have it taken down like that, that's something that we can't do ourselves. Right. And it's it's expensive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so. I think that the school board should be looking at an energy audit of the heating system to see what if you could change fuel, I don't think we're going to see, I think oil's going to just keep going up. And they're already predicting gas prices will be over $4 a gallon by Memorial Day. 
Well, they do that they every year. Yeah, a mean, long walk to work. Fourth of July. Yeah, so, <laughs> you know, and it, it's something that needs to be looked at. When you get up to four or four fifteen a gallon, I think you're going to find that an alternative is going to be cheaper. It's certainly when a good does idea your to bus contract come up for renewal next year. At the end of the next school year, uh, come back next year. We're covered. I, we're I'm, covered for next year. I'm afraid you're going to be in for a rude awakening when you start negotiating. Well, I know. And you know, I oil is beyond anybody's control at the local level, and I know that you guys have been buying oil. In, Mine with Sanford and stuff, but you know, if, I wouldn't be at all surprised to see by next fall that you're going to be looking at an oil price of five bucks a gallon. Oh. They've been talking and about this for 50 years. You know, it's, Where it's, has everybody been? It scares me. How about <coughs> 1975? I remember. <laughs> Anybody well, remember 1975? Yeah. Sitting in lines, you get your gas, depend on your plate station. number every yep. other odd <laughs> day, odd <laughs> month. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm just saying, for 50 years they've been yeah. talking about this in Washington, the same right. bunch. Right. When is something? When are they going to do something? And then I got my license, so they decided to jack up the price. Mm -hmm. Okay, are we all set with this budget section? If so, let's go on to number three. <clears throat> which is the approval of the minutes of the school committee meeting of January 10th. I'd like to make a motion to accept the minutes as written. No, I'll second. Sir. It's been moved by Mary, seconded by Betty, that we accept the, that we approve the minutes of the January 12th meeting as written. Any discussion? All those in favor? So moved. Five votes. Well, I don't know if you can approve that, Judy. Were you here? Oral. Oral. <laughs> well, I mean, I looked at it. Oh, <laughs> I just make life complicated. I know. Okay, let's go on to any comments from the public or visitors? Happy Valentine's Day. Thank you. Aw, <laughs> Linda. When is that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was on cable. Oh, it was on cable. Okay, communications and correspondence. Don't have any. Okay. Then let's see, how about the superintendent's report? Yeah, I'll make it real short for you. Uh, I sent out the advance report. Uh, just so you have some background information. I want to let you know that I talked to uh, Betsy St. Cyr yesterday. And uh, I was really pleased that she sounded different from the last time I talked to her. I mean, she was relatively energetic, uh, pretty positive. Uh, she had a doctor's appointment, I think, yesterday, and then she meets with a cardiologist on Friday. He's the same one I have, so we talked a little bit about what a great guy he is. Um, but I thought that uh, overall she sounded better than since I've been dealing with this. And I think she's hopeful that the uh, system will be back sooner rather than later. And that's what I'm hoping. <laughs> <laughs> sure. You're not getting away that easy. <laughs> of course you are. are almost 60, ready, I heard. Yeah, 60 degree weather, he's gone. Uh, um, I don't have anything else. Uh, I think you can move to the um, um, other reports. Uh, Trish has got one right in order here if you want to go that way. Okay, principal's report. Mine's not as short. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> what? Try. <laughs> I tried, uh, but first up I have the kneecap da data, um, and I summarized it on the, the report page, but I also have included um, the grade by grade uh, analysis for 2009, 2010, and 2011 with a three-year average. 
So you could actually track the grade going across. You could also diagonally track particular class across the three years and how they improved or did not improve, mostly improvement, um, for each group across those three um, years, both in the reading and the math. I also have down the bottom of that extra page um, for uh, the reading and the math, the school average of each of those years. Overall, the reading has um, progressed very strongly. We are up to now 78% of our students um, at proficient or proficient uh, with distinction, which used to be called meets or exceeds. So those are the two levels you're looking for. Um, with eighth grade actually having no student that landed in the does not meet category at all in the reading and writing. Uh, math has made improvements, but again at a much slower rate. Um, staff is already starting to buzz about the why. We have to break down the data into much smaller increments to really analyze what is slowing us down. Um, at the time of this report, the state had not sent out their state averages, so I did not have that for comparison at this time. In general, we have been one to six points above state average. In, um, again, less in the math, but in the reading, we've always been ahead of the state. Um, I also mentioned here the spelling bee. Uh, first place was Ian Point. Second place was Paige Krampitz. And third place went to Thomas Landry. On the early release day, February 2nd, myself, Joy Kiley, and the four teacher leaders um, organized an afternoon session, uh, really looking at an assessment of the school district, not just classroom level, but overall as to how the staff felt. Um, they're basically asked to work into three categories of things they felt were most working, you know, completely working well, doing well, to um, items which they saw as a work in progress, and they were to then identify what were the strengths of those things and what things were still in the way for those works in progress to be solid and working. And then the final category they reported out in was a what's missing or what would be on your wish list. <coughs> um, could, if you could have. I will have a full report for the staff and the school board after February break. Um, but I can tell you in advance that the top comment for missing or would like to have was again foreign language. And health curriculum was another strong recommendation as items which are um, in need according to the staff's assessment of the district. Um, for extra activities, we are again increasing the amount of after school activities available for all our students, K to 8, wide variety, writing, drama. Um, Lori Fecto and Cami Davis are working together on a knitting, uh, a weaving and spinning activity. Uh, Lori has also, has actually, her husband has made miniature spinners. So the students are actually going to, you know, Lori has the, the sheep. And so they're actually going to learn how to spin yarn. Um, all of these after-school activities are free to the students. And like I said, there, there's a wide range being uh, made available, different days and different age groups. The We Deliver Post Office. If you had come in last Tuesday, you would have been very impressed with the seventh graders and how <coughs> sharply dressed they were. Um, they, again, through their language arts program, um, had to create resumes and cover letters and apply for jobs within the postal system. It is up and running. Kids are sending letters. It's really just exciting to have this again um, in our school. The NWA testing, there was a mini online assessment done um, for grades three to eight. Parents will be getting the reports of those along with the NECAP reports uh, mailed home to them. Um, we will see in the spring as to how they compare to the longer tests as to whether they're, again, uh, measuring consistently with what teachers are seeing in the classroom, as well as standardized tests to standardized tests for measure of accuracy and uh, meeting content standards for the students. For the third graders, that will be their, was their first time or second time taking oh. an online test? Yeah, second time. Well, we started, we actually started second grade. Second grade, did a test. Second to... Uh, eighth grade this, this round 
Yeah, third grade is it was their second time. The second time. So it would have been the second grade's first time doing an online assessment. So you won't have any longevity of their, like, it's good for them to have that experience. Mm -hmm. The 100th day of um, celebration was last Friday. Um, and I did, as I wrote my note, I did actually keep my promise. I brought in my uh, little first grade buddies like to see which pin I'm wearing. Um, it's rare. Matter of fact, I got caught today without a pin on, and I was, <laughs> I did not get away with it. They noticed. Uh, but I actually brought in uh, my pin collection or part of my pin collection, and we counted 118 of my <coughs> <laughs> pins. <laughs> and they were, they were great. They had other things they had brought in 100 of. Uh, the York County Shelter um, received donations as well as the Acton Food Pantry. Um, and that was headed up by Jen Goodwin and the Student Council. Um, staff members participated in a week-long jeans. We could wear jeans for a week um, as long as they contributed to the food pantry, uh, to the uh, Acton, the York County Shelter um, program. So that was good. On the back side of my report, like I said, it's not short tonight. Um, I had a fabulous meeting on January 26 with the superintendent of Sanford, David Therides, and Megan Walsh, who is associated with the counseling um, in Sanford, and really talked about ways in which Acton and Sanford continues to work together. We're looking to access um, more sports and after school activities for especially our middle school students. Um, the conversation part of it was focused on the sports that are not available here in, in Acton. For example, field hockey, cross country, football, sports which do not involve cutting. You know, there, no students are cut, you know, and sports, sports that we don't already offer here. Um, with that conversation, uh, David also talked about uh, a time period after the high school is done with the pool in the YMCA offering swimming to middle school students. Um, same with the gym, the time when the high school is done with wrestling, middle school students get exposure to the wrestling program. Number one challenge, transportation. There's no after school activity bus here available in Acton, nor is there an, a Sanford late bus for our high school students who stay after school for activities coming from Sanford. Um, so that is obviously an obstacle for getting more students involved in after school sports and activities. I do have a meeting next Thursday morning um, with uh, David Beret, uh, excuse me, Paul Beret of the um, Junior Achievement Program. So I'm meeting him next Thursday morning to again look at another avenue of pursuing um, activities and support for our Acton students. Uh, yesterday, Sanford um, High School uh, counselors and their uh, ninth grade vice principal were here. We talked about changing step up day to be earlier in the spring so that there is more of an academic sense to the high school as opposed to after the seniors have left and kids are kind of winding down a little bit too much. Um, talked about ways in which we could again s support our seventh and eighth graders in the middle school years so that when they're leaving here at the end of eighth grade they feel more prepared to enter high school, so what kind of transition things we need to do. Um, students were given their um, choice of courses and what kind of activities are available at Sanford High School when over um, choosing their classes for next year with their teachers. Um, so that was a good, that was a good uh, conversation. And you might laugh at my little trivia, but yesterday marked three years. <laughs> really? Three years since I last was a sixth grade teacher. <laughs> Any regrets? <laughs> <laughs> the gray called. hairs are hidden, so I can claim no regrets. <laughs> it's called Trisha Trivia. <laughs> exactly three years ago yesterday. I, I unknowingly, at the end of the day, had left. Last year, uh, three years ago, that day was actually Friday the 13th. <laughs> Right before February break. We I remember, remember that day. <laughs> <laughs> I left the classroom not knowing it was the last day that I would be a sixth grade teacher. <coughs> I did not know. So, Surprise. Um, yeah, yeah, life is surprises. Yeah. Um, I have learned. I have grown. Um, and I do. I love my job. I 
I keep um, asking her every day. Do <laughs> <laughs> you still love it? <laughs> and I'm trying hard to keep my promise to Linda that I'm the last principal she'll ever have to train. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Are there any questions I can answer for you at this time? I want to thank you for digging into the sports situation because I have had parents mention to me that a situation with it and I think it's wonderful that you went ahead and did all of that on your own. That must have been out of, uh, that's probably not on the job description, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> my so job I description, my job actions are not aligned right now. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's great that you did that and obviously you got had a lot of success and for our kids to be able to do that in seventh and eighth grade I think would be just marvelous. Mm -hmm. I agree. Uh, we have to figure out some something well, for we talk about having the um, transition into the high school and my <laughs> boys they played soccer and so a month before you know ninth grade before going to the big school they knew a whole bunch of kids mm -hmm. and the first yes, day of school yeah. didn't frighten them at all. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, the other thing we really talked about, and Tracy um, Scully, who's the athletic director now, she and I had talked in the fall. The key for a lot of these kids, and it's not a large, not a large group, but if they've been through the SSYAA program mm -hmm. for these sports, they have been doing football until the end of sixth grade, yeah. and then they lose it for two years. Two years yeah. yeah. So they've already made contacts with Sanford students. They're already yeah. into the sport. And then they lose it for two years because we can no way support that level of, of, of a team. So the goal was, how do we make it work? And I, I got to say, David Therides is an outstanding gentleman. And that's what we talked about is what are the obstacles? One of the challenges was um, aligning the um, rules of play, making sure I said, you know, I would make sure that <coughs> whatever um, <coughs> academic accountability or behavioral accountability that the Sanford 7th and 8th graders are held to, the Actons would be held to the same one. Um, not cutting a Sanford child from making a team because an Acton kid did. Well, I'm talking about sports where they don't have cuts. It was a non-issue. I'm not asking for basketball. We out offer basketball. I wasn't asking for soccer. We offer soccer. So it was really important that we looked at, you know, what were the actual obstacles and what could we do about it. Transportation, these parents have already been transporting their students. We're talking about maybe seven or eight kids in any one given season or year. The hard part is for me is to how do I open up to those stu students like cross country, which is not an act and rec program, but there are a lot of kids who would be benefit from track or cross country, but they need that initiation, they need that opportunity. Yeah, some, for some, their parents are not going to be available to get them down to Sanford at 2.30 in the afternoon. <coughs> so talking about how can we prevent obstacles from limiting all our students. We talked about there's a bicycle program, a, a, a repair program. They're going to come actually here to do a demo for that. Um, we talked about some of the summer programs that are available. Um, with it. there's a police academy available to um, seventh graders. Mm -hmm. Just a lot of it is about opening up that dialogue. Um, I spoke with Dave and he popped over and talked to Jan Goldsberry who's the curriculum coordinator. And I need to look into purchasing an online website um, so that we can actually interact more often with staff development. They offer Tuesday afternoon programs um, at no cost to the district. You know, we could jump on board with that we could be offering some here. So a lot of it is time, conversation, and then coordinating. You know, so I by no means think this is the end of it. You know, I expect that I'll be meeting with David and, and, and Megan again in the next month or so and seeing what we can do next. Like I said, I have a meeting next week with the Junior Achievement. I'll then be contacting the um, Bicycle Repair. Just sometimes I just run out of time in my day to make all the phone calls. Um, but I really see this as a positive move of, again, not forced consolidation from the state level, right. but mm -hmm. appropriate conversations at our level that benefit our kids. Yeah. And, and they were just as warm and as exciting about us making this opportunity as I was. Good. And really, when we applied for our donut hole exemption, that was one of the things that we said we would continue to do, yes. was to continue to strive to have more cooperative activities and um, for both 
for both staff and students with Sanford. Um, so that's a good thing. Yeah. And the risk model, I didn't mention it too, but the risk model training is about um, standardized, um, standards-based learning. And so we're talking about students mm -hmm. measuring their success based on uh, predetermined criteria. So you've got a, a eight or 10 or 15 things that you have to be able to do to prove proficiency in something. Um, the risk model training has happened already in uh, Massabesic. It will be changing the way high schools are run. It makes sense that all elementary schools feeding into the same high school have the same understanding of how the academics are going to be changing. Mm -hmm. So again, it does not make sense to exclude Acton when we are feeding our students into their high school. So that'll be something that'll be coming up. How is that working with like Master Visa? Have they done any studies or anything to see how that worked? It's just, is this their first year or is this their second? I think, I think this is their second. second. Okay. So it's still in the very infancy stage. Um, They're pretty excited about it. They are. Yeah. yeah. The kids are really learning. You know, you, you've got a matrix and you can really plot your course and teachers I think it's more hard. I think it's harder on teachers sometimes mm -hmm. to change their mindset yeah, of how they grade, right. of how, yeah. how they assess. Mm -hmm. it, it's a it's a change, but to allow a student to not be held back, show what they learn and go on, move, 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 mm -hmm. is an exciting proposition. So you're not holding those students back who can cut, who are capable of those things, and then you're able to address the support to the students who need more. So again. Time becomes the variable, not the success. Not success. The learning is constant. <coughs> but the time, how long you, how, mu how much time it takes a student to learn the material, yeah. can change. It's uh, um, Pat Reeves um, is one of our biggest fans of the standard space model, and she's done some investigating it. And we definitely see this is this is where we're headed. But you know, with many things, it takes a lot of research, a lot of time, and like I said, the training piece is huge. Um, so we need to know when Sanford is starting the process so we get our teachers trained along with theirs. And you probably saw that Sanford just got a huge grant. The Nellie May grant? The Nellie mm -hmm. May grant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a biggie. I didn't see that. It's seven million. It's again progressive education. It, it ties in with their plans of um, where they're headed as a new high school and, and vocational, vocational. and college and all that. Has that been finalized? It's moving forward. But it hasn't, nothing's been finalized on it. I mean, mm -hmm. we keep seeing The biggest that issue is money, obviously. Okay. So the state hasn't decided how much money they're going to give them or? It they've decided they're going to do it. It's just a matter of when. Okay. Hmm. Where, so where will it money. be? Have they decided or that? Where I they? don't think that's been decided mm -hmm. yet either. But the, but the the concept of it is, and this goes along with the Nellie May thing, is that it's it's uh, an academic environment, a hands-on environment, uh, a practical <coughs> community learn a job environment, vocational environment, mm -hmm. and it also ties into the uh, the community college system as well. So it's a it's a an awesome idea of pulling all these things in together so that you can meet the needs of kids that learn at different levels. Kids that excel can go on and do college classes, kids that need hands-on, kids that aren't planning maybe to do secondary education can learn trades. It, it, it involves job mm -hmm. shadowing, it involves uh, a myriad of really, it's, it's an awesome program. I can't wait to see it really get going and see our kids have the opportunity to, to participate in all of that. <clears throat> so my little grandson who's four months might be able to. He will be there. <laughs> He'll be there. <laughs> I know. The waiting is <laughs> not easy. <laughs> You've got to think more positively No, than because that. I really thought Jake would have a new Sanford High School and he's in, a junior now. So, no. <laughs> I'm hoping for my son. <laughs> no, don't. You'll disappoint yourself. Okay, any other questions for Tricia? If not, let's move on. Let's keep on trucking. Um, special Ed. Okay, I think you've hey. met Joy again. I just want to stress again that uh, we're absolutely delighted to have her on board. We are joyful. Uh, 
your report. It's exactly oh, it's what wonderful. we want. Oh, thank you. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well, I tried to give you the information that I thought you might be interested thank in. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, you know, just to start off, I every day, as I said in my report, I am impressed by the staff and, you know, the students here and just the whole environment, the building. It, I, it's just a wonderful place, and I'm delighted to be here. Um, I'm working on, you know, the budget. Obviously, my special ed teachers have submitted their um, budget information with all the backup and the detail. But I'm still looking at contracted services, and I asked them to provide me with some information so that I, we're meeting the kids' needs, the student needs, um, the best we can. Because I know that they, um, some some of the service providers are kind of doubling up, and so we want to make sure that we have students getting the services they need in the appropriate group setting. So um, that's what I'm looking at, and it's still in process. Staff development, um, just sort of an ongoing um, provision of staff development to the ed technicians. Um, I've been meeting with them. I've met with them twice, and I will continue with, to meet with them and review things, um, you know, protocol, procedure, and obviously working with students. That's the most important thing. But for the last two sessions, we reviewed the job description. Um, we're still reviewing that. And then also the confidentiality pol policy reviewed that. And then I'm, I'm, my plan is to send out a message to the entire staff to review that and ensure that um, they're following the policy, but they, there are subtle nuances to what we do in the school sometimes, and people don't recognize that they're, they're breaching confidentiality. Um, it's, they're well intended, so we want to make sure that we're on top of that. Um, and then Trish spoke of the early release day, and I was, as I said, honored to be part of it. Um, the, the teachers were very focused, very excited about the process of <coughs> creating a plan for the future and a mission and a vision uh, for Acton and the whole, you know, the whole school department, not just the school itself. Um, but, and it was, I thought it was very well received by the teachers and Trish did an awesome job. <laughs> um, and student programming, of course, that's really what the, is the heart of my job and I've been looking at uh, meeting with the teachers on a regular basis individually and then um, in, in a group but really looking at how we provide services, um, making sure that students are in the classroom, getting those services um, as opposed to being pulled out unless it's absolutely necessary and talking with the teachers about what's best for kids and reviewing how things, how we do things here and making sure that it's aligned to uh, main regulation and obviously the law. Um, and no one's out of compliance, but everybody does things a little bit differently. So we're we're really tightening things up uh, to make sure that our meetings, you know, go really well and um, you know are in compliance with the law. Um, and then, of course, um, what you see here are uh, at grade level the student population that we have, um, and clearly we have. It's very clear we have uh, 44 students. Um, here at the school who are identified with special needs and at the high school at Sanford 31 and out of district placements are at three uh, and we have three special ed teachers and eight ed technicians and then four contra contracted service providers so speech uh, OT physical therapy and we have a wonderful school psychologist who is just awesome um, and that's about it. Have any questions? How many one-on-ones do we have? I believe we just have one one-on-one, -on -one and yes, one one-on-one -on -one at this point. I, the ed techs move around and support kids as <coughs> needed. So, you know, there may they may a, a student may get one-on-one -on -one support, right? But it's not an assigned right. mm -hmm. ed tech yes, all yes, day yes. long. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm sorry much. she didn't exhibit much enthusiasm. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. I love being here. Oh, good. good. Well, we love your report. Thank yeah. you. <laughs>
Okay, that moves us on to the finance director's report. Oh. Yeah. It's facilities. Facilities, did I skip somebody? I've got nothing. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> most of uh, what I've got to, to do with spelling. <laughs> most of the information <laughs> I've got to provide to the committee tonight was taken up under the budget That's information. <laughs> other than a get well wish to day custodian Bruce Martin, who is home recovering from surgery. Um, wish him a speedy recovery and look forward to him coming back. Other than that, we are gearing up for February vacation. So we have a sub for Bruce? Yes, we do. <coughs> and unless you have any questions for me, that is the shortest report I think I have done since I've been here. I, well, I, know, but I almost think we have to <laughs> We'd have to agree that that probably is the we'll shortest talk later. one. <laughs> <laughs> IT manager's report is on right. the. Mine's really short, actually. Um, there's probably stuff on here too that I haven't put in, like day to day putting out fires. But um, I spoke with Ted earlier today. Um, last month, I brought up to uh, everybody's attention the surveillance system, oh. and we discussed about putting it to the town vote. Um, and uh, we also talked about taking it out of the uh, what is it, cash fund balance. Um, and I spoke with Ted earlier about doing that, um, so we can, so the process will be faster, so we don't have to put it through. Um, so he agreed that uh, we can take it out of the fund balance if we have the money available, which means we can get the ball rolling, put it out to bid, and get the surveillance equipment installed maybe during spring break or something. Um, so that's, uh, been taken care of, uh, NWA testing has come to a close, uh, and I've printed all the reports and they'll be sent home with the kids probably this week, um, and put in their files, Mail. mailed, okay, they're going to be mailed, um, and my next, I've been busy, I've been, uh, busy with personal life, so I don't, my report's really, <laughs> really, uh, yeah, I've heard that, yeah. <laughs> Um, I was changing diapers. <laughs> my next section is kind of tra travels into uh, Carlene's. Um, we sat down to sign up a, with a new uh, copier contract with uh, Budget Document Technologies. Um, we currently have them for a printing contract, and uh, I'm pleased with how when uh, printers run out of ink, we get the ship, we get the product in um, before I, you know. We're, we're seeing an issue, and then I just plop it in place once we're uh, low enough supply on, on the device. Um, we, we, uh, my experience uh, as far as the support has been, I call them up there the, the next day, they fix the problem, but I don't know if it's due to just timing or what, but um, I told Linda, just call this number and say this printer's having a problem, uh, but they, it took them like a week to get here. Uh, Almost two, two weeks. Um, I my decision is I'm going to let you call from now on. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> they'll, they'll come faster. They'll respond faster. Anyway, um, besides that, I might. It, they they mentioned that one of their guys had the flu, and yeah. they, they, it could just be a timing thing. It is flu season. Um, but that aside, if you look at Carlene's notes, um, there's a huge cost savings going with this company. Not only do we get, um, you know smaller bill we get brand new equipment that can do what we needed to do in today's you know world like print to it versus printing to these printers that cost I think 20 cents more per page <coughs> um, <clears throat> so that being said you can probably carry on to the finance uh, report <laughs> and see the details anybody got any questions for Mike Thank you, Michael. Mm -hmm. Finance director. Okay, I don't want to sound like a rerun, but like Mike said, we've been working on this contract with uh, Budget Document Technology. Um, right now we're contracted with ICON for two RICO copiers that the contract expires on September of 2013. Um, 
we have not really been happy with these particular pieces of equipment. Um, there's a lot of jams. They blame the paper. Other companies tell us that's not, it's not the paper. Um, these, these machines seem to run better from what we've heard. Um, the cost per copy is, is less. We're going to save an annual savings of over $1,400 a year if we decide to do that. And that's as of this month. If we decide we're going to change over to the, this new lease before, you know, the um, new fiscal year starts, we'll save, you, you know, we'll save as we keep going towards <coughs> the, month, the cost will go down because we'll have paid up more of our own lease. And besides that, if we put these devices in place, we'll be able to take two printers out of the network. Um, which will also decrease our printing costs. Well, what's going to happen? And to they'll the buy out. And they'll buy out the contract. Buy They're buying out the contract. Oh, they will. Oh. Yeah. 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 This cost includes buying out the old lease and becoming part of the new oh. lease for five years. Right. So each month that goes by that we don't sign up, this right. number will get less as far as what the buyout cost will be. Because so. hmm. each month you're going to save one hundred and eighteen dollars. Mm -hmm. So. And one thing, these, they don't call these copiers. They call them multipurpose machines because what can happen is Mike can connect them directly to the servers. You can send your print job right down to the copier, and then when you want it, you go down to the machine, you punch in a security code, and then it prints it for you. So the only way anybody else could get your copy is if they knew your security code. Um, what they also have on them is a keyboard. That folds down. So if you want, like, say, I wanted to send all these board reports, don't panic, Jeanette, <laughs> to you electronically, <laughs> I could scan them and just email them to you right from that machine. <laughs> so the paper savings, the ink savings, is huge. So I think um, I one of them. Hmm. in the long run, we may end up saving more money having these machines besides just the monthly savings. Where are these people located? <laughs> These are the same people that do our printing, and uh, they're scattered. Um, I think their main office is in northern Maine-ish. Uh, I, I don't exactly know their location. They were bought out by another company, so. Now, did they come to you and say, do you want to change over? Or did he's you? Been, yeah, since yeah. since last year when he signed up with Mike for the, for the printers, he's been trying to convince us to switch over. Yeah, because um, they, they save us money as far as uh, cost to printer ink and cost of printer repair and also my time because I don't have to deal with the printers anymore and just like call this number they'll come and fix it. Oh, that's good. Kind of thing. I don't have to worry about you know writing up a PO and ordering the ink they just <coughs> ship it and it's part of our contract so same thing will go with these copiers is once the copiers run out of ink we'll receive you know replacement ink for the copier and we just stick it in and then recycle the old one. And now you think of any any reason that we shouldn't make this change like <coughs> like the old, Do we need a vote? Is that what you're saying? The only, like I said, the only um, conflict or issue that I could think of is a recent, you know, two-week wait on a repair. But being brand new copiers, we shouldn't have that problem. I mean, Linda's printer is like five years old, so. Five years old is like garbage. Is so <laughs> sad. <laughs> I would like to make a Before motion. Do what right, what does the town do? They're actually because I'm just wondering if uh, there ought to be a link up here. Well, yeah, I think we do because I had your package up there, and when I saw that, I brought it up because we're having the same problem up there. Uh, we just had to fight with the company. Same thing, jams, and it wouldn't work. And they come back and they say it's the paper and it's the moisture in the air and all this other stuff. It just went on and on. <laughs> and finally, Jennifer just called them up and said, "Come and get that machine and bring us a new one." We still got another year with them too, so it'd be a good idea for us to join together and get it into a contract. Yeah. We might we, be able to get a smaller number if we do yeah, it as a group because we want to get another one for code enforcement because they they've got a lot going on there, we, and they have to come upstairs to use the others. So we would have three. And then however many you guys have, so it would probably be a good we idea for us two. to tie you together. Um, so if you can talk to Michelle about it, okay. and because uh, we're about to do at the same time as you guys are. And what's the name of your company? Do you have that icon? No. Um, I think it's the company that we have the, uh, I think it's Xerox, because we have Xerox printers, and I think it's Xerox is the Xerox. company. <coughs> and, uh, you know, it's been a nightmare. Yeah. If you go up there, ask Lorraine sometime. Oh, yeah. One of the one of the 
good features about these is that um, instead of just taking one ream of paper, they hold five. Oh, wow. So that the less oh. times you have yeah. to load the, the paper, yeah. the less like a big chance of a jam, you know, so that's, it's, it's a much better deal. Huh. We just we decided we should hire one person to load, so they load it right. <laughs> they load it, yeah. yeah. Supposedly, there's a curve in the paper, and you have to get it in the right curve and not the other way around. There's an arrow well, on the paper. You have to have a class. I think it's, it's going on your job description. Yeah, it's, it's been on my job description. I always said that. I can't believe they're still saying that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so. They were trained that way. I will make a motion that we contract with budget document technology as soon as we can. I'll, I'll second. second. Go ahead. Go ahead. Richard seconded. And did you and did you want to coordinate that with it? Did you want to make well, that that's why I'm saying as soon as we can. So okay. somebody to coordinate, coordinate with the town. We'll work with the town and yeah. see if we can get a better deal. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We need one right away, and then the other two are still on contract, but we need to get one right away. Okay. There you go. Okay. Um, Mary made the motion. Who seconded it? Richard. Richard, Richard seconded it. That we uh, move ahead and. Uh, Go for this new contract for our copier printers. Multi something machines. What were they? Multi, 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 multi everything machines. Multi purpose. Any, uh, any other discussion? If not, all those in favor? Five and all. Okay. Um, the next thing is the Gift and Talented application has been reviewed and approved <coughs> by the state. Um, that was for this school year, the 2011-2012. We just received notice on that. I just wanted to let you know that. Um, and the expenditures are on the back of the report. We're currently in an eighth <coughs> month, and the budget's still at 50%. So we're in pretty good shape. As far as I can see, we've paid half the tuition costs. And the only expenditures right now that um, we're having a problem getting bills for is transportation. Um, I've contacted them at least twice regards to getting the bills for all the sports transportation and field trips, and they're not coming through. This is for a student. Yes, correct? we're having a couple of issues with them this year. Yeah, I know we've had some issues with the transportation company. Yes, they've had a change of uh, yeah. management. Change, change in regime. <coughs> change in regime sometimes <coughs> makes a makes for uh, a big difference. So. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, I think we've started dealing a little bit more assertively with them, and hopefully that's going to work. <laughs> Is that you? <laughs> Bob's all Team over it. <laughs> 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 okay. But there again, eventually, if they want their money, they need to send the bill. Yeah. Tell them we're not going to pay them if they don't give us a bill. Yeah. Works for me. Keep telling that to the we don't want a bill for fall services in the spring, and we can't right. remember what it was, and we yeah. Yeah. yeah, we'll get on that one. Questions? Questions? No. Thank you, Carlene. Okay. Committees. Long-term committee done anything this month? They didn't no. Plan no. It would okay. This month. Policy committee. Jeanette and I met as a policy subcommittee, and we hashed out after much emailing and changing and looking at the code of conduct. We have it here for the second reading. Well, on the. Let's see now. When did we have the first reading? Because on 11:15, I wrote on my paper, first read did not happen. Well, what happened tape. after Something that? Was table. Right. Was that? And the what second happened reading last month? was tabled. It was tabled. The second reading. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. That's when we said, I said, we can't vote on this right. tonight. Right. So I know if we were voting, we had the first, the first reading. Right. Get that anyways, Jennifer? I'm looking right now because I, I remember you coming with the second reading and <coughs> there hadn't been a first reading. Did you say November was? November 15th, I have in a note. It said first read did not happen. <coughs> January 10th minutes mention 
right. second reading, and then it was tabled. Right. So what about the December meeting then? First reading coming up in later agenda is what That's how we left November it. say. That's November's. Okay. okay we'll get the minute to you. Yeah, December's is in the pack, I think. I have the game that I want to see. You do? Jen just got it. December's policy committees, new business, hiring. In December, it is not even on here. <coughs> but how did we get it to everyone then? Because we just kept. No, how did we first get it to people? That was the first reading in mm -hmm. November. It was in the right. packet. It was in the packet. Yeah. Right. So we did. It was in the packet. So we did the first reading in November. No. November no. says that we did not. No, it did not we happen. Did. See, I put my note. Did not happen. You can and watch then it on the, the website. Next time we really no. didn't discuss. Actually. <laughs> I think this copy here that we have tonight is the first reading. I believe that you are correct. I, I don't remember it. I don't remember you having a first reading on that level. So. We never got back to it. October. Yeah, but then how did we get the get it to begin with? It, it came in the mail. But besides that, we <coughs> I think I think, things to change. I think what they're saying is that we had it. And we we didn't actually vote. Did you look at October? Look at number eight. We met in September, hashed it out. She came up with it and brought it. Okay, but October. What, what date is that? That's November. It's right here. What's it say? In that just says discuss. There's no there's no motion well, there no that vote. they. No, but it's the first reading. But there's no motion. No, you don't we have to motion a first we reading. Don't, no. We don't have okay. to motion a first reading. The first reading is a, a discussion type thing, and then we vote on we vote on it at the second reading as a final Which didn't right there business. Seal, sealed deal. Which didn't happen. Okay. It says uh, in our November meeting under new business, the first reading of policy, discuss JIC, and discuss with policy what? length and reason along with what state is mandated. So we, we did go over it, obviously. Yeah, there's no motion. Okay, there's needed. no, okay. Okay. Then you, you don't have to motion this is a first meeting. Okay. I mean, a first reading. This, this, the second. <coughs> it's the, only the second and, and adopting. And adopting. Okay. Yeah. The motion. Is the second to adopt? Yes. We changed that a long time ago. We used to do three. Yeah, it used to be different. Okay, so Mary has made a motion that we adopt this as a second reading. The Code of Conduct Policy. JIC. I did um, email and say get rid of the underlines and oh, clean it up, gone. and that was done. Mm -hmm. So then, however it looks in the computer now is probably okay. the final. And which is great. It's uh, it's in the computer. Not no one has access to all these. Only a few people. But you know, now that they're up on the computer, eventually we can get them out to the people very easily. And we can work at them and change them very easily. But once we've been, once we've accepted and adopted it, then it should go out to everybody anyway, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't think we've set that up yet, but we can create those folders, public, yes. the public folder that are approved yeah. and the yeah. private folders that are still being edited. Yeah. Okay. It'll um, tie in. So who with the discipline policy. I don't think anybody procedures that we use at the school level. I'll second. Okay, it's a motion by Mary, seconded by Jeanette to accept and adopt code of conduct policy JIC. Any further discussion? All those in favor then? Five and zero. Oh. Yay! <laughs> Done it working on this one. It shouldn't take six months. <laughs> if it's good, it's worth waiting for. Okay, let's yeah. see. Any new business? If not, then I would uh, <coughs> entertain a motion to enter into executive session. So moved. Second. 
All in favor? 